Howdy friends, welcome back to the Outpost. All right, some of you all know that we're in the middle of a cabin build here out the Western Kentucky Outpost. If you've missed anything up to this point, just simply go back to the beginning of the playlist and you'll see the series of events that have led us up to this point. Today's episode, we're gonna be starting on the plumbing installation. Now installing the plumbing here at the cabin at the Western Kentucky Outpost is going to be a little bit of a challenge. It's kind of unique because everything for the most part is going to be up underneath here. Our clearance space is around two feet, two and a half feet with gravel and about five footers and such. Now by doing the plumbing this way, there are some obstacles that we have to work around such as floor joists, the location of where our framework is inside, the location of where the plumbing itself is, and be able to do it in such a way where we can make it look all nice and we're not creating a bunch of mess up underneath or through all the floors. Now during the time we were doing site work and getting things ready to pour footers as well as getting the building delivered and all that other stuff, there was an actual outlet right here where my camper used to sit, which is opening that goes into the septic tank. Well, I had this design so the cabin could be built and set where this was still up underneath there, I still have access to, but everything drain-wise inside of this building has to ultimately reach that hole. Right here where I stand, I'm towards the front of the cabin, okay, and we're on the north end. This first transom window you see, underneath there is going to be a kitchen sink, so we have to establish drain lines and water lines and stuff. The first thing we're going to be working on in this episode is running water lines underneath. And then there's a second transom window that's past that where the master bathroom is going to be. And after that's the bedroom, we're not worried about it. But on the other side of the house, we have a laundry room as well as a half bath. So all that's going to end up having to be integrated together to bring everything over to this side, over to where that septic is, where I showed you. The water lines start here in the front. Let me show you how we did that. You're taking a look at the front of the cabin area. I'm in the driveway, and right here next to me, my left, is a water meter. Well, it's been there, it hasn't moved. Remember, we used to have the camper sit here with the barn and stuff. Well, a water line goes up here to this corner, and I'm gonna show where that is. I had to go through a lot of little foibles to make this happen, but the water surface is there, it's ready to go. All we need to do is run our lines and put them where they need to go. Okay, so here at the front corner entrance, of the cabin you'll see a piece of three inch pvc pipe which is coming up out of the ground well inside of here i have my water main that is insulated it comes up inside and up below the surface so we can have that all protected when the cold weather comes and this entire cabin is going to have skirting down through around it to keep it away from the cold air and stuff so my line is up through here and i'll show you i'm going to get down here and i'll show you where i have actually a shut off valve which would be the water main shut off in case we have an emergency all right, hopefully you can see that. We have a water main shut off right here. And remember, we're at the front of the cabin. So the water line came up through the ground, through the PVC pipe, and I did it over and I put a shutoff valve. And this is where the start of our water system is going to be ran from throughout the rest of the building. All right, I hope everybody can hear me. They've got fans going on in here uh, to keep the air circulating stuff because it's hot. Now, there's that window right there that we were talking about where the kitchen sink is gonna be underneath. So that's where we're gonna have our first established water line. Water main coming up to that point, and then we're gonna to have to start with a second water line, which will be a return for the hot water. As it travels past, it goes over to another room, which will be the master bath, which has a lot of business. Now across from us over on the south end of the building is where we have the utility room. It's got the washer and dryer, and a room next to it, which has a half bath. All that stuff over there has to come through and integrate down to this point where I showed you where dump is for the septic tank. Now the type of pipe that we're gonna be putting in here at the cabin is a hybrid PEX known as Upinor. It's designed to contract and expand under weather conditions. And this particular type of water piping does not require any gluing or any kind of soldering. I have a special tool that I'm gonna show you how it works. It's really, really cool. Let's go ahead and get started and start running some pipe up underneath. All right, right now I'm sitting with my back up against that water main that we put in the service to the house where that shutoff valve is and stuff, and we're up underneath the cabin. This is towards the front. You can see there's stairs that are down here that come in the front door, and the kitchen's going to be off over in that direction. So we want to try to sneak our first piece of the three-quarter inch Upinor pipe in between these skids, which there's about eight of them that run the length from front to back, and then our Floyd Joyce's that run from side to side. I got a little area up in here I want to sneak this through, but before we do that, at this point right here, I want to establish a little half inch line that we can hook up an outside spigot and then past 
those stairs where the door is, there's going to be a refrigerator. So I'm going to have to sneak another line down through there for an ice maker line, then make my turn go down and hit the kitchen. All right, first snag we ran into trying to run this line between all those beams is, is where the two parts of the house come together, they put another beam up through here. So I'm going to have to get up through here and I'm going to have to drill a hole between that to sneak our water line through. As you can see, I brought it in from the other side. It's got to get through that to pass through to get over my water service. All right, I hear some weather in the area, so we may end up getting a shower, thunderstorm, I have to cut production. I'm gonna show you how this tool works. This is the opener pipe, it's three quarter inch, and it comes with a little band. It's got a little lip that's inside there. We're gonna take, and we're gonna slip that little piece on there, like so, and we're gonna use our gun, and once we expand this pipe and put our fitting in there, well, we're not even gonna put a fitting in there for right now, we're gonna attach this to right above my head where that water main is. Pretty slick stuff. All right, we made a decision, took a chance, and drill the holes down through here inside the wall and dropped the two lines down. Remember, underneath here, there's another beam just underneath it. Well, I had just enough room. I'll show you when we get back underneath there where I was able to slip that and bend those pipes back so I can get it out of there and access to the main water lines they're gonna tie into. Let's go ahead and put a couple 90s on here and 90 it out with a couple pieces. That way, it's ready for roughing for the kitchen. There, we got two water lines that are stubbed out for the kitchen right now. Uh, Left is hot, right is cold, so this will be all set and ready to go. Usually I put some plugs in here and stuff, but we're not messing with turning the water on and off. Nobody's living in here yet, so that's not any kind of problem. Now when we get the cabinets in here, we can just drill the holes through the back of it and it'll fit in perfect. And these lines will be in the wall, they'll come out looking really nice. We got it mounted we're just going to set this into place this is a cover plate it won't go on until we have finished product coming across this wall nice all right so we've had to take a little bit of a break on the plumbing here at the cabin because of the fact being is, is i've got an electrician that's supposed to be coming out here within the next week so that changed a lot of things well, let's walk through this and i'll show you what's happened all right, here on the back of the new cabin building stuff, as you see here, here is our electrical pole. I just got this moved yesterday. I had a gentleman come out in my next door neighbor, and we dug up this hole here, this trench in the back. Uh, the utility pole has been sitting here since I bought the property. Well, two things are wrong. First of all, it's too close to the back of the cabin. And second of all, we have to dig and bury a new service that's gonna come up and go inside like so and i'll show you if you pay attention up there on that line up there if you can see closely let me see right there a big gob of wires electrical company came out and cut the line they took the meter all that other good stuff so we could get this done it has to happen because we have to get inspection and everything before we can actually bring power into the building all right, a little bit different angle right here is our service pole and the back of the cabin. You can see the trench has been dug out. Got lots of roots that are sitting here and all that stuff. We've got to dig that out. <laughs> There's an area right up in here that's part of the original foundation when we put this cabin in here. That's got to get dug out and that line's going to be buried in conduit coming up just underneath far enough the bottom of the building 
and brought up into where the electrical panel is inside. Walk inside, I'll show you that. All right, as you enter the back door, here is the 200 amp electrical panel that's inside of the cabin itself. This is set where it needs to be. Now, the only reason why I'm getting an electrician to come out here is because I'm gonna pretty much be doing all the electrical inside of here, uh, running the wires to where they need to be, put electrical boxes in, switches, lights, all that. But I have to have a licensed electrician to come hook all this stuff up, as well do the outside work, hooking the meter up so we can get an inspection. So here on the back side of the panel in this little half bath, you can see I've got wires that are all coming down. These are all lines that are being ran. I'm running these. They're going to be going into the electrical panel. My goal, what I have to do this week is to get it, all these lines that are inside of the building for electricity brought over to the panels so that when we an electrician gets here, he ain't wasting no time. He can go ahead and hook all this stuff up. He's also going to be hooking up a new heat and air system for us as well. All right, another reason why we had to slow up on the plumbing is the fact being is, is I'm doing all that stuff so we don't have to wait on anybody. We got all the stuff to do that. <clears throat> but we did get a brand new jacuzzi whirlpool tub that's gonna be setting into the bathroom and stuff. And we'll have to build a little sub wall for that. <clears throat> and we're waiting on this new shower, which should have been here, but there was a problem with the ordering and the delivering, so they had to hold up on that. So it should be in here sometime this week. Those are all things also pending for the plumbing to get done, because when those things come in, I have to build a couple sub walls to put in here, and there'll be a little bit of electrical going on with that as well. But work never stops around here. All right, so we're up in the cabin right now. Right now we're working on trying to get the electrical where it needs to be before I get a licensed electrician out here. I'm not a licensed electrician, uh, but here in the state of Kentucky, uh, you're allowed to wire your own house without having a license. The only thing you need to have is a licensed electrician to come out and hook your service up from the meter to the house and possibly the panel uh, for the inspection and stuff. So I've done a lot of research and everything. We're up here in the little half bath, which is gonna have only a vanity sink as well as a toilet and a couple lights. Let me show you how I'm gonna go about doing that. Real quick disclaimer, I am not a licensed electrician. I've been around electricity all my life, being a plumber and stuff like that. In the state of Kentucky, it does not require you to be a licensed electrician to wire your own home. That being said, usually in bathrooms, they require you to run off a 20 amp circuit, okay? With a, at least one GFCI, which is a ground fault circuit interrupter outlet, which is gonna protect everything down along the way in case there's some sort of fluctuation, it'll shut everything down. But in this case, in my half bath, I only have a toilet and a lavatory. So we're gonna run two 15 amp circuits in this little half bath. One of them's gonna to be to an outlet that sits right here next to where the vanity is gonna go. That's gonna be a dedicated service just for this single box. Then I've got a double gang box sitting right here. This is my light switch, which is gonna cover an overhead light as well as a vanity light. And that also is gonna be run in 15 amp service. Check it out. This right here is a 15 amp GFCI. Now I won't be using this in the master bathroom. That'll be a 20 amp service. But like I said, this is just a little half bath. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to put up a gang box here and I'll show you how we do that. So inside this little half bath, as you can see, here's the back side of the wall with our utility room and the laundry's over here in this room as well as our venting and all the rest of the good stuff that's going on. I want to put a little vanity right here and I want to have an outlet and it's going to have to be a GFCI. Like I said, most of the time in a the bathroom they're required to run a 20 amp circuit. Well, because there's not going to be any tub or shower in here and the moisture is not going to be high content like you would like in a master bath, we're going to be running things in 15 amp circuits. The first thing I want to do is I want to put an outlet right here on this wall and run a home run 15 amp 14 2 wire over here to the panel because all the wires need to be ready by the panels when the electrician comes in he's not fighting and waiting for me to run wires and I'm paying all the money for the labor and time so we're taking care of all the rest of the stuff inside plus my box.
Okay, down here at the box, we're gonna take the excess wire that came from the panel. We're just gonna roll it up and set it up inside the box. This is gonna be a one and done complete circuit just for this outlet. And we're gonna leave it sit right in there and we're not gonna put any kind of outlet or anything in here until the finished wall is put up. But now it's there and it's out of the way. I don't have to worry about anything else when it comes to this outlet. And there you have it. We have our power coming in to our box here for our lights. Now eventually I'll have two more lines that come out. One of them is going to be going to the vanity lights and a single overhead light. Maybe it seems like a little bit of overkill, but everything is here in this build because I want no problems. I want ease and comfort and the security knowing that everything is done more than what it has to be so we don't have problems on the road. All right, it's gotten to that hot part of the day where I'm getting out of here for right now. We're gonna be have to work on this same thing, getting our home run leads for electrical back to the panel at the back of the cabin for the rest of the week, get ready for the electrician to come in here. Let's head outside, recap, and wrap this baby up. Wow. I'll tell you what, I've never been so busy in my entire life. Uh, between work and my full-time job, sneaking an hour or two in after work every day, and on the weekends and such, every moment counts. And at this point in the time, I've got about three and a half months left to get the electrical, the plumbing, the heating and air, as well as the insulation in here, at least so we can be inside of the cabin and not have to spend another cold winter inside the camper and stuff like that. Got any comments, questions, leave them down below. Until next time, here at Western Kentucky Outpost Cabin Build, join me then for more good things to come.